combination of all this Lumina is consuming 30,500 watts. Just to give you a bit of reference, 30,500 watts, it's the equivalent of a football stadium during an event. But the difference between a football stadium and this building, it's like this building will be lit from Monday to, sun to Sunday, all night long. So it's a massive use of energy. The lighting pollution is excessive, misdirected, and obtrusive artificial light. In this building, I have spotted five different categories of lighting pollution effect. As you can see, the combination of these five categories are directly linked with like a list of issues which is impacting our health, well-being, safety, in a different way. Lighting pollution, it's not a tomorrow concern anymore. Welcome to the Virtual Lighting Design Community Podcast, your go-to source for all things related to lighting design. Today we have an exciting episode lined up for you. In this episode, we'll be diving deep into the topic of light pollution and its impact on our lives. Our guest speaker, Fanny Soulard, a senior lighting designer at Oricon, will be sharing her expertise and insights on this pressing issue. Fanny is a French native, holds a master's degree in applied art, which has laid the foundation for her successful career in lighting design. Throughout her journey, she has worked in various companies and in various countries, gaining valuable experiences and honing her skills. She specializes in sustainable projects, particularly in public transportation and rail development. This presentation was recorded at the Guangzhou International Lighting Exhibition in China. It's a renowned event that brings together professionals from the lighting industry to showcase the latest innovations and share knowledge. But before we get started, I want to let you know that the full video version of this episode is available exclusively on the VLD Community online platform at members.vld.community for our pro members. So not only will you be able to watch this episode, but you'll also gain access to a wealth of resources, connect with fellow lighting professionals, and engage with industry peers outside of in-person events. So if you're passionate about lighting design and looking to take your knowledge and connections to the next level, be sure to check out members.vld.community and explore how you can become a member today. We would also like to extend a special acknowledgement to our premium supporters, Aero Light, Creative Lighting Asia, Erco, and the Signify Lighting Academy. Their generous support helps make this podcast possible. Now, without further ado, let's dive into our conversation with Fanny Soulard as we explore the detrimental effects of light pollution and the innovative solutions employed in a major bank project in Vietnam. Enjoy. Good morning, everyone. So I would like to invite you the next 15 minutes to have a little walk with me in Vietnam and more specifically in Hanoi and more specifically to have a look to this building. So this building belongs to Tecom Bank, which is one of the biggest banks in Vietnam. It's a 22 floors offices uh, building with a restaurant on the top. It has been designed by Foster and Partner. And my company, Orecon, was in charge of the engineering part for the facade and the lighting facade uh, design. It's also certified as lead gold. So let's see what it's looked like by night. So here we are. I've been asked by my company to do like the commissioning part. So my first job has been just to dig a bit like in the documentation and make sure that the result is actually matching with like the concept report and all what has been agreed before between like the architect, the client, and my company. So if we have a look, we're not so far. Like between like this concept, uh, rendering, and the reality, sorry, um, the um, idea is there. So from my company perspective, we have done the job. But from the client perspective, not really. And, and he was quite upset when I met him like during this commissioning night. And from my perspective, I won't bet on this project to win an award. But so this is maybe not the most fantastic project in Vietnam. However, I found very interesting to display a bit of this story today because it's a very good like study case to understand how the lighting pollution can impact a building, but also how the same building can create lighting pollution. So lighting pollution is excessive, misdirected, 
and obtrusive artificial light. In this building, I have spotted five different categories of lighting pollution effect. As you can see, these five, the combination of these five categories are directly linked with like a list of issues which is impacting our health, well-being, safety, in a different way. It's like a, a very like diverse like issues between like um, physical injury to mental disorder to uh, like environmental like disruption. So let's see, let's start sorry with like the first category. Light trepass. So when I first approached this building, I've just seen like half of one of the elevation is purple. And I just wonder in my mind, do we have RGB luminaire? We don't. So I just turned back and I discovered that the building faces this building, my Torah, it's actually hosting like a giant signage on the roof. And as you can see, this giant signage is creating like an intrusive light in all like the private and public areas around. This is what we call light trepass. When we have like an external source, which is supposed to have like a purpose, which is just like giving some visibility to a signage, but it's actually going well further than its original purpose. And it's completely inviting like the surrounding like areas. So I let you imagine what it's like working and living with like a, this signage close by. Very disturbing. The next topic will be like the energy consumption. So I put you two different uh, pictures. The one on the left, it's when all the lighting system is off. The one on the right is when everything is on. As you can notice, the difference in terms of lighting effect is not huge, it's very subtle. But if I gave you some background detail, you need to know that to achieve this effect, we have put 700 luminaires, which is a quite big installation already. And all the combination of all this luminaire is consuming 30,500 watts. Just to give you a bit of reference, 30,500 watts, it's the equivalence of a football stadium during an event. But the difference between a football stadium and this building, it's like this building will be lit from Monday to, sun to Sunday all night long. So it's a massive use of energy. And I believe like in 2023, we need to be a bit more like conscious and just getting like something consistent between the energy a lighting concept would use and the effective like effect we can perceive. Next category, it's a loss of light. So this building at the level seven has some balconies. Every balcony, they are equipped with some linear recess on the floor. This linear, they are supposed to wall wash the handwell. For some reason, the handwell is a clear glass. So nothing is catching the light. And this is what we can like, uh, notice here. This is a perfect loss of light. The luminar doesn't have any purpose, but the light is still there and it's still like uplighting the sky, which is creating definitely like an impact for all like the environment. Next topic, it's a spill lighting. So I believe that the interior designer on this project felt a bit in love with the Barisol products, which are like this luminous ceiling. And Barisol, it's a French company. I'm a French citizen. We're French. I'm not here to criticize their product. But we need to be a bit conscious and careful when we use this kind of product. Why? Well, first, if you spot on this picture, you can see that the area is very bright. So they are very powerful luminaires. And here we can see that it's a bit overlit. So we might need to dim a bit. Otherwise, we're just like exceeding ex uh, in the energy consumption, but also providing a too much like exposure for the worker there. So that's the first point. And the second point, it's like, when you, we are using this kind of product, they are very diffuse. So the light is actually escaping from the, in the room. And this is not so good. And this is, uh, spill lighting is actually the reverse of the light trepass. This is when we have like an indoor room with a luminar which is supposed to cover only this indoor room, but actually a portion of light is escaping outside. And this is like providing light on the trees, providing light on the public area. 
it's not what we are looking after. And last topic, but not least, the glare. So the glare usually is when we have like this very uncomfortable situation to have like a luminous uh, source in, inside our vision field. In this case, we have these vertical lights which are trying to wall wash part of the facade. However, the way they have been installed, however, if you're standing on the road, on the sideboard, you have like this night blindness experience, which is even worse than just uncomfortable. It's actually dangerous because we have like users, like a lot of motorbike and all that stuff. And actually, the police went to meet like the owner of this tower and they claim about this. They just point out that this lighting system is not good. It needs to be changed. So just a little break. Uh, so we have review like these five first like uh, categories. And as you can notice, everything is not linked only to lighting designers. There is an impact of the environment. There is an impact of the material like, uh, which has been specified by the interior designer. Maybe like one of the materials has been changed. Maybe because we have like a budget cut. So if we want just to be, um, to have like, um, an approach a bit more like smart and just to avoid lighting pollution, we need to have like a very holistic approach and we need to coordinate as much as we can with all the parties inside the project. So just to be back to this commissioning night with my upset client on my side. So I need just to make it a bit more happier, right? So we tried just to act uh, with like the current situation and to improve it. So the first action has been to redirect like all the light to a surface. So this is what's happened with a regular situation, like tilting a bit like the linear and adding like more accessories. Second action, when we don't have a surface, which is the case of our balcony, if you remember, maybe we can bring a new surface. Because the first idea was just to put maybe a vinyl on this clear glass that will bring back the original effect, but it's not preventing like the light to be spilled like in, in the air, right? So the idea is maybe to suggest to have like a planter or maybe a bench, which will at least filter like a portion of this light. Third action, which is a bit more tricky. So all the lighting, the, the, uh, lighting system on the facade, sorry, it's actually providing by some linear recess on the bottom of the um, windows frame. So we have very few allowance just to change that. However, we can still change all this light it's perceived inside the environment. So we were suggesting maybe to add like a new materials which can get like something like a bit uh, catch the light differently or maybe we can have like a color with filter. So it's just like testing and make this light like a bit more effective and even more that, as you remember, because we have like a lot of consumption behind in terms of energy. And the last action is like we have spotted that all the room actually have some present sensors. But even when the room is empty, the light is still switched on 100%. So maybe we have like a bit of effort to do with the setup for the timer, just to reduce the time like before getting like this uh, light off. And also maybe just to have like a proper dimming scenario strategy. If we play a bit like seriously with this, we can save energy, of course, but we can also improve the brightness balance between like the indoor effect and the outdoor effect. So it's definitely like a win-win situation. So here are my second break. So we have, this is the end of my like um, building review with you. But I just want, as a conclusion, raise like a topic and just like underline that lighting pollution, it's not a tomorrow concern anymore. Why am I saying that? So I don't know if you have heard like the news lately from Vietnam, and I think Vietnam is not a unique case, but actually we have like a lot of heat waves coming like inside the country and especially in the north and center. So many people are using the air conditioning. This is like increasing the demand of power. But all the north province of Vietnam, 
like the power system rely on hydro power plants. The problem is these hydro power plants have a very low level of water, so they can't operate normally. So on one side, we have like an increase of demand of energy, and on the other side, the production is going down. So what's happened? Well, we have like energy cuts, energy shortage. And what have done the city as an emergency response? They have decided to shut down like all the decorative uh, lighting inside like the um, public area, and especially the one who are demanding a lot of energy, right? So they can rebalance a bit like where the energy is coming. So I think now we can, we can like hold like a very good argumentation for our client to say like this is happening now. So the next time, if you're designing like a project at least in Vietnam, you should go directly to the suburb like project and rediscover maybe like all the charm and all like the poesy of the low level um, effect and something like sustainable. Otherwise, even if you're not like a sustainable friendly person, someone will come and switch off your, um, your installation. So here we are and I'm hoping that that will be like a really good inspiration and new start for Vietnam just to handle in a different way. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for listening in with us today and we hope you enjoyed this presentation by Fanny Solard. If you like this presentation and would like to receive notifications when new episodes come out, consider subscribing to the podcast. We would also appreciate any feedback you have and of course a glowing review on your favorite podcast platform. Check us out on our YouTube channel as well as our online community at www.vld.community. We will catch you next time with a brand new episode.